I bet you can't guess where I am. I'm on the Air and Calder Canal. Throughout the country, if you've got a, if a river or a canal that runs through a city centre or a town, you can bet your bottom dollar that all the fish move in there to migrate in the winter. But I'm here to find out, do the Air and Calder ropes like our new micro Fulca baits? Let's find out. We're very lucky where I come from because we've got the Stainforth and Keebe Canal, we've got the New Junction Canal and we've got the Air and Calder. I don't know how many miles of canal there is. It's unbelievable really how much fishing there is. But the thing about this canal is, one, it's wider than most canals. It's not your normal, typical 12, 13 metre little canal. But the one thing that gets people on, on all this canal system that we have in our area is it moves. It'll move that way, then it'll move that way as they open the gates and everything like that. And it always defeats people that they don't know what to do when it moves. So what you've got to do, you've got to have two or three rigs set up. One for when it's stood, which is usually a light one, a 4x16s or a 4x18s, a gram if it's just pulling and a one and a half gram if it tows away. And that usually covers most of your fishing on this canal. And sometimes it's better when it moves and sometimes it's better when it's stood. You've just got to work that out while you're fishing. And one of the things I've always found out when I'm roach fishing on these canals is find eight foot of water. Set your float to eight foot, plumb up, and whenever you find it, that's usually the best depth for roach. So the first thing I've done, I've looked for the eight foot of water. I've plumbed up and I've got it to eight foot. On this canal, you have to feed some kind of ground bait for the roach to come in. You want a ground bait that's basically hemp, a lot of hemp in. The fish will respond to hemp, so it wants to be a hempy type ground bait. So this is a hempy type ground bait that I've mixed. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little mixture of two-in-one micros in, uh, mainly black, 50% black, and then a, a mixture of the other ones as well, just in case they want a different one. You never know, you might get some skimmers moving and they might want a different colour one. But the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create a little base. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to get a couple of small tennis ball sizes of ground bait. And I'm going to mix it so it's nice and round like that. Then I'm going to put it in the cup and I'm going to pick a spot that I'm going to aim to and feed to. I'm going to take my time and I'm going to put three or four of these in. Now this is really important, this where you feed, because where you feed, when the fish are feeding, and if they like your ground bait, they'll be smack on top of it. If, they're away, if you're catching away from the ground bait, it usually tells you ground bait's not right. So it's all a case of trying through the session. And the only thing you've got to do different during the day is then is to work out do they want the loose feed on the top or do they want a little ball of ground bait. I've fed my spot now. You might think, oh, you've cupped that in. Why haven't you thrown it in? I've cupped it in because I just want it to be around my flow. I want it in a little area. When I, if I throw it in and I get one out, sometimes it's not quite right. I want it smack exactly where my float's going to be. Nice and accurate, exactly where I'm, I'm going to be fishing. That's set it off now. All I've got to do now is decide when I'm going to feed again, whether I'm going to feed a little ball of ground bait or loose feed. But the fish will tell me what I'm going to do. I always think the first time you feed is really important because what I want to know then is how long it takes for the fish to move on to that ball because the next time you feed it'll be the same time and the next time you feed it'll probably be the same length of time but the first one is really important so the first time you ever feed make sure that you don't pour a cup of tea out or anything like that because you pick your rod up and you continue to fish and the moment you'll get a bite Try and take that length of time into consideration. What you've got to remember is, when you've put your ground bait in, you've put it in a spot, and you want to be fishing on that spot. So to get on that spot, first of all, you pick a marker on the far bank that you've actually put your cup to, tipped it over, and fed in that little area. But then to get my rig there, all I'm going to do, I'm going to pick it up, swing it out to end of the pole, and put the olivet in the spot that, that you've got target across from you. 
so you know that that length is in the ground bait. Then what I do, I just hold the float, bottom just off the bottom for about five or ten seconds, like that, and then I know it's in a straight line onto my ground bait, and then all that I do, I just lower it to the fish. And I know then, that where our fed is there, and look where my, my float is, exactly in the same spot. And I know that everything's in that area, my ground bait's in that area, my float's in that area. If you just cast it out, it could finish up anyway, it'll swing round, but I always want my hook bait to be on my ground bait. So, what baits are we using? Well, I'm using the 2 one micros. I've got a mixture of black with a few red, whites and yellow in. And I want to try and see if the fish like them. But of course I'm on a canal, I'm fishing for roach. So I've got a few casters, I've got a few maggots, which I'm going to alternate between as well. But the beauty about this, I can get a maggot and I can hook it. I could pick a caster up and I can hook a caster like that, with the same hook. And this is the beauty about the two-in-one bait is... I can pick one up and I haven't moved the hook out of my hand and I can hook it. That's what makes it special. So you can try it without changing your hook. You don't have to put a band on or anything like that. So you can have a little mixture here of your two in one, your casters and your maggot. Find out what the fish want. Sometimes it's two in one bait, sometimes it's maggot, sometimes it's casters. It's up to you as an angler to find out what's best. I reckon the fish will love them. The hook, hook length is nice and fine, it's, it's either an 08 or an 09, depends on the size of the hook. Sometimes you can actually up it to probably 010, but to be honest with you, you don't need to go above that because it's nice and light, nice and fine, and it makes the bait drop through nice and smooth. Your main line is a little bit thicker than that, it's probably, it's probably 012 or even 014. The reason for that is just thicker than the hook length. You don't want your main line that's going to be finer than the hook length. It's a little bit more rigid, a little bit stiffer, and it just hangs there. Makes a nice balance so it drops through the water. Then I've got my bulk, which will be because the size of the float, an olivette with two or three shot just there. Now then, you might be wondering what an olivette is. All olivette is, is a weight, is a lump of weight. And it's to save you putting lots and lots of shot on your line. It's free running, but I always stop at me with a, with a shot above it, because I don't, I don't want it moving, it makes no difference. That's all it is. Why is it two foot from the olivette to the hook. Well it's quite simple. I'm not fishing for fish that are going to be feeding on the bottom. Roach and perch come in and they take the bait and they move off and they're moving all the time. So I want it to drop through the bottom two foot like that because that's how the roach and perch feed. So get it down quick to two foot off the bottom and then the, the dropper then drops like that and hopefully the fish will come in and intercept it. So that's why you have three droppers in the last two foot just so it drops through the water. And then I've got a 6 to 8 inch hook length with an 18 or a 20, the harder that it is. That way it's a bit more relaxed. It's not like a commercial where you're above it and you're, you're lifting and dropping everything. It's a bit of line and it's more relaxed and you'd sort of more or less let the float go under, strike into the fish. Then the float, all I'm using is just a normal standard float. Because the canal moves, it's almost like a bit like a river and I like a wire stem bottom for the river just so it adds to the stability of the float. Long slim bristle and then from the float to the elastic it'll be about two foot again. The elastic is pretty straightforward, it's a four to six zip, it's pink, it's just perfect for roach and, and perch type fishing, just a perfect elastic. And that's my setup. One of the big things that people ask me all the time is when I'm fishing, when do I feed? When do I top up with my ground bait? Well, the easiest answer to that is when you stop catching. And it's as simple as that. If you're catching, you just keep catching and the moment you stop, there's two things happen. Either a big fish moving or the need feeding. And the easiest answer to that is just feed a little ball and see what happens and see if you get a response. The only time I might change from that 
is like today I've caught two or three skimmers and I've skimmers moved in and moved the roach out so I just make sure I just make sure for a, a few minutes longer to make sure it isn't skimmers but usually that's the key when you stop getting bites that's the time to feed now the one of the things is when you're fishing this time for fishing but you've got to have the ground bait right like today just an example it's definitely better on the ground all my fish I'm catching today is smack where my ground bait is in the same spot the fish are comfortable coming over my ground bait they're picking the bait out of the ground bait I think and then I'm putting mine in the middle so that means I don't really want to lose feed because if I start lose feeding it's a bit different because what happens is is because it tows a bit your fish are all over the place so I'll just try and get them to concentrate on the ground bait if you can if not then you've got to encourage them in with a catapult and all you do with catapult is just fire them in on the same spot try it over your ground over your, where your ground bait is same spot and that way but trust me the moment you pick the catapult up you've got to catapult rest at match so I always try and keep it as long as I can before I start loose feeding because I know because the canal toes backwards and forwards and it's all over the place I want to get them with the ground bait that's on the bottom I've created a bait and I can put it and run it over that all the time and that's all that I'm trying to do Right, finish off with a little perch, look last fish of the day, but I can honestly say that has been absolutely fantastic, what a day's fishing, I've had a bite to cast, I've had plenty of fish and it's the first time I've been here on the air and calder in Nottingley and I can honestly say it's absolutely fantastic, it's full of fish Every time I've fed a ball of ground bait I've caught fish. They've definitely come to the ground bait with the bait that, that's in it. I've caught a lot of perch, I don't know, 40, 50 perch, but I've caught them on the maggot. But the rest of the fish I've caught on a red micro foca. I've had six skimmers from probably 10 ounce to a pound. And I knew when they were in my peg, it just went quiet. And all of a sudden I caught one. They come to the ground bait instantly. The fish wanted to be on that ground bait, which is the key to getting big weights on a canal. Fantastic days fishing. Go and have a look. I've got double figures. I'm not sure what I've got. Probably 60 roach, 70 roach, 30, 40, 50 perch, and six skimmers. But the red, red micro folk were the best bait today for them better fish. Don't know why. It's the first time I've been to Nottingley on the air and calder, but it's certainly not the last. <laughs>